Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate your patience and also we appreciate the Red Army hanging around for this very special occasion. My name is Lockie Reid. I'm your MC for tonight's proceedings in what is a history-making moment for the Perth Wildcats organisation. Tonight, we honour an outstanding career and legacy of club great Sean Redditch and we retire his famous number 42 jersey. Sean Redditch, ladies and gentlemen, played 300 and 80 games for the Perth Wildcats over 13 seasons. He sits third on the club's all-time games played list. His incredible accolades include four NBL championships, six Gordon Ellis medal wins, club MVPs, two-time All-NBL first team, three-time All-NBL second team, and two-time All-NBL third team. He was also the Perth Wildcats captain from 2009 to 2013, and he was part of the Perth Wildcats 40th anniversary team member. Please, a massive round of applause for a mighty legend. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Sean's jersey becomes the seventh player retired by the club joining the greats, and yes, we'll give them a massive round of applause. Ricky, the amazing grace, number 15. Andrew Blahoff, number 21. James, the Alabama Slammer, number seven. Scotty Fisher, number 30. Mike Ellis, number six. And Scott Fenton, number 14. Please, a massive round of applause for our greats. Have a look at the shape these blokes are in. They could play a game never. Uh, anyway, I have some special guests, of course, to welcome to the stage as well, ladies and gentlemen. So please, a big round of applause to Sam Fotu, Perth Wildcats General Manager of Business and Administration. To the CEO of the Sports Entertainment Group, Mr. Craig Hutchison. <laughs> Former Perth Wildcats coach, Rob Beveridge. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honour to welcome the man of the moment. His name is Sean Redditch. And I welcome Sean up to the stage, along with his wife Gretchen and kids Haley and Dylan. Ladies and gentlemen, the scoring machine, Sean Reddit. because I'd like to welcome to the stage now to uh, have a little chat, the Perth Wildcats General Manager of Business and Administration. Can you please go crazy for Sam Fotu, ladies and gentlemen? How good is it to have Lockie Reid back in the house, everyone? Thanks, Lock. Since 1982, the Perth Wildcats have continually demonstrated core values and beliefs that have made the club the most successful club in the NBL. Team first, hard work, competitiveness, inspirational, excellence, entertaining and pride. From day one at this club, it was evident that all of these qualities were in Sean's DNA. My history with Sean starts at a time that would have probably broken most athletes. Not because he had to play with me, but I'll tell you a little bit more. After being let, let go by the New Zealand Breakers, he spent a season in Davenport, Tasmania, in the SCABL. After winning a league championship, an MVP, there were no NBL offers on the hand. We teamed up in Bendigo. Sean did what he did, as always, worked harder than everyone else. Play for his teammates and his club, and win. 
Another championship and another MVP followed. It was the near the end of that season in 2005 that he got the call up from the Perth Wildcats for a trial, and the rest is history. Sean is the epitome of what it means to be a Wildcats player. He's an incredible representation of our history and a phenomenal example for all future players. It's no accident that success has followed Sean throughout his career. His CV is full of championships and personal achievements. What's his secret? He just works hard all the time at everything he does. There is no greater honour at our club than to get your singlet retired. And it's been an amazing honour for our club to have you service it for 12 years, Sean. To Sean, Gretchen, Haley, and Dylan, the Perth Wildcats sincerely thank you for your sacrifice, dedication, and hard work. The number 42 will sit proudly and fittingly against the other legends from our club. 42 forever. Congratulations, Sean. Thank you, Sam. Now we've got a special guest here, a man that's helped bring Sean Redditch to Perth. His name, ladies and gentlemen, you might have heard of him. He's a club legend. His name's Andrew Vlahoff. Thanks very much, Lockie. And uh, it is a great honour, ladies and gentlemen, to be here, part of this celebration. Um, I've been asked to say a couple of words about, about Sean. And in thinking about it, I think the best thing or one of the best things I've ever done is bring Sean Redditch to the Perth Wildcats. It wasn't easy. For some reason, he wanted to go and play for the Kiwis, which I hated. But he ended up coming over here, and not only did we know we were getting a great player, as we got to know Sean, we knew we were getting a great human being. And to be a Wildcat and to be a Wildcat legend, you epitomise that by your work ethic, the human being you are, how you are in the community. It is truly a absolute deserved honour for you to be here and your jersey to be up there. Well done, mate. Have a seat, gents. Could be a long night because uh, a bit of a favourite is coming up now. I think the fans will cheer this man. Uh, he coached us to the 2010 Grand Final Championship win. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rob Beveridge. How good is this place? Uh, yeah, to come back here, it, it's just amazing. It, it, uh, it, it's the fondest memories I've ever had of coaching the NBL. And uh, yeah, I sincerely appreciate you guys asking me to come back. Uh, Sean, when, when I first uh, came into the league, I actually competed against you and I couldn't stand you. You know, it was, he was the most agitating player that I've ever, ever had to coach against. I think he, he um, set the standard of flopping in the early days. He's, <laughs> But when I took the job here at Perth, I'll tell you, it was the best thing that I could ever have with Sean Reddish on my team, that uh, he's an absolute amazing leader. He was the captain of uh, our team back in 2010 when he won the championship. At the same time, we, we lost some championships, but I had this man next to me through the good and the bad, uh, an absolute amazing human being. What separates yeah, the goods from the greats is, is your work ethic. You know, I've never coached a player that's your first to practice, your last to leave. You're always doing all the extra bits and pieces. Uh, I, I actually thought that before every single training session, every game, that you'd have a whole litre of red cordial, that you were so hypo that you're intense uh, the whole time, and I think that separated you from, from all the, the great ones. Uh, one of the, the, the worst memories that, that I re recall is in Adelaide. Uh, when halfway line and you, you had that injury, uh, it was heart-wrenching uh, that we thought your, your career was over, that you broke your, your, your hip, snapped it. Nine months later, back on the floor, and it was one of the most amazing things that I've ever seen. <laughs> I 
I've always preached about you got to be great on and off the court, and uh, you are one of the uh, amazing person with Gretchen, Haley, Dylan, amazing father, husband, and when that comes down, that that is one of the most deserving things. And congratulations, mate. All right, folks, uh, Sean Renich has so many great teammates uh, and they're all standing over there. Give us a wave, guys. Greg Hires there, Damien Button, Tommy Jervis. Were they? Wasn't it a uh, teammate, but he was an uh, arch rival. So many great people over there to the left-hand side, but one of your very good mates wants to say a few words. Can you give a big round of applause to the captain of the Perth Wildcats, Jesse Wagstaff. I got you. Just throwing out dimes. Uh, firstly, thanks to, to Sam and Craig for letting me speak. Um, it's, a, it's an honour and I, I can't think of anyone more deserving to get their jersey retired, so, so thank you. Um, I think you've heard it from Hoff, I think you've heard it from everyone. Um, you know, the type of player you are and, and the sacrifice and work ethic. But I want to I do two things. I want to thank you for two reasons. And, and the first is, is when I came to the Wildcats 14 years ago, um, I don't think I could have asked for a better role model um, to, to show me what it takes to be successful as a professional athlete, um, your, your work ethic, your dedication, your sacrifice on and off the court. Um, I don't think I could have, could have asked for a better role model. Um, I'm, a, I'm a better player and I think I'm a better person for it. So thank you. Um, and secondly, and I think probably more importantly, I want to I thank you for our friendship. Um, you know, when everyone thinks of Shawnee, they think of the hard work and the floaters and the, the block on, on CJ at the last game of challenge. But I also think of them, but I also think of the off-court stuff. Um, for me, you forever wear red lipstick on the wrecking ball singing Miley Cyrus. To me, that's, <laughs> that is just as important, if not more important. You'll always, you'll always be the guy, and I think my teammate, ex-teammates over there, whoever's done a a player's review with Shawnee. You don't want to be standing next to him in the group dance because he'll count and try to keep up with Raquel, but, which is fine, which is fine, but he'll be two and a half beats out. So you don't, you don't want to be standing next to Shawnee. You, you're trying to look good. You'll always be the guy that threw a snake on James Ennis. You know, and, and they're the things I cherish. Um, this thing would be happening anyway, but the fact that you're such a good person, um, I think makes it so much better. Um, you look at Gretchen and your family next to you as well. Um, I look at my wife over there and I feel like it was just yesterday. Dylan's taller than, than you now, Gretchen, but I feel like it was yesterday. We went over to your house and you went to the hospital um, and we looked after Hayley um, for a day. It was a, certainly an eye-opener of, of what kids means, but to me, I think they're the most special moments. So, so thank you for them. As I said, I don't think I could find anyone more deserving. Um, it's a testament to you and your character. It's a testament to the sacrifices you made as a family as well. Um, I know you guys are a long way from home. But uh, to you, Gretchen, Haley, Dylan, congratulations. As I said, I couldn't think of anyone more deserving. Well done, Jess. Congratulations to you. Also, uh, on my glasses there for close-up, but Kevin Lish is over there and Cam Toby as well, two of the players. Can you give those two superstars a big round of applause? Ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to the presentation. I'd like to ask Craig Hutchison to make his way forward to make a presentation of a framed jersey and say a few words, please, for Hutchie. Thanks, Lockie. Um, proud and humbled to be among such legends tonight. Welcome to everyone. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the Red Army, the fan base tonight, the way you've respected Sean, the way you gave your energy in this game, the way you cheered, the way you gave our team momentum. Best fan base in the world and proved it tonight. So big thank you and congratulations to everyone. And then to our club, your club, your players, our coaches, for the way you conducted yourselves tonight, as you always do, paying tribute to this man. Fantastic win and a great effort and an even better night for the family. So a round of applause for our team and our club tonight. And then lastly, before I hand over a small presentation to Gretchen, to Haley, to Dylan, and to the whole family, this has been a family club for generations. Humbled to be here to see it tonight. And you guys have made such sacrifices. You've been such a family. You've been leaders in this community. You've been leaders in this city. 
What you guys have done, you deserve tonight as much as your wonderful Sean does. And to see your family name live there for, for generations to come, you should walk in and be really proud of what you've achieved, the sacrifices you've made as a family, and you should smile every time you walk in. You've earned this moment as a family, and we're absolutely indebted for your service to us for a long period of time. So to the family, magnificent effort, and congratulations to Gretchen, Haley, and Dylan. And last but not least, a small memento, Sean, on behalf of the Perth Wildcats organisation, our staff, our players, our coaches, and the wonderful team, a small memento to take home as a family. Well done again, and congratulations. Thoroughly deserved. Well done, Hutchie. Thank you very much. Well spoken to. All right, folks. Now it is the time to ask Sean to come forwards. <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, look, uh, <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm quite nervous. It's, a, uh, look, it's just a surreal moment. I, uh, I just can't believe it's actually happening. So um, I'm, uh, I'm blessed. Uh, everyone uh, here tonight, uh, you know, I thank the guys that they got a win. Um, and uh, what an awesome atmosphere. So, uh, you know, just uh, it's, it, it's a humbling moment. All right, you've got a speech coming up, so just relax, all right? But now is the time, the very special time, and I'm gonna get the fans to be involved, because, you know, they are the best. They supported you over many, many years, so they're gonna count down with me, three, two, one. We're gonna look up along this long list of champion players. We've got Fenton Ellis. That's really nice, Mike, that, that number six, that looks beautiful up there. Crawford, JC, the Alabama Slammer, Scotty Fisher, Vlahoff, and Grace, and I reckon there might be one about to slide down next to Ricky Grace, and the crowd is gonna join with me now in going three, two, one. Are we ready to go, Red Army? Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, came to this club, you knew the tradition that this club had. Did you ever think that your name would be alongside Ricky Grace, Andrew Vlahoff, Scott Fisher, James Crawford, Mike Ellis and Scotty Fenton? That is, uh, that wasn't even in the cards. Um, you know, 18 years ago, uh, I think Sam Foto alluded to it, I was playing in Bendigo, I was driving to a game, uh, we were playing in Knox, Scott Fisher calls our coach at the time, Wade Larkins, uh, says, Look, we had a ticket. We were flying Lucas Walker over. He's decided to go back to college. We don't want that ticket to go to waste. So I felt uh, pretty, uh, <laughs> all right, I'm second choice here. But um, we'll bring, can you come over for a trial? Uh, the only bad part is you got to be at the at Melbourne airport at 6 a.m. So played that night in Knox, um, raced home packed up my bags, headed out west. Scott Fisher picks me up and uh, drives me to Scarborough Beach. Did I say that right? Yep, beautiful. Um, I've tried. I think I said Scarborough the first time. Um, and, uh, you know, I watched the sunset there, Scarborough Beach, and I thought to myself, I'm never leaving this place. And uh, 18 years later, I'm still here. And that's up there, so pretty cool. I know you've got a few people to thank, but I just want to throw a few questions before, just about basketball, because we all love basketball. You came here, Scotty Fisher was coach. Tough times during that early stages of the Scotty Fisher tenure. And then Bevo came along, and you got a few young blokes, a uh, few good-looking blokes, you know, Kevin Lish used to take his top off and stroll around the streets of Perth. Damien, 
Damien Martin at Flashy's Pearly Whites, but you were you were the man in that team, weren't you? You were the gun. Well, you know, I got to the game early because I knew you were going to be calling. And, uh, you know, when, when you said number 11, Bryce Cotton, the best player in the NBL, I had flashes because there was maybe one or two seasons where you used to say that about me. So um, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was an honor to take the court and put on that red jersey every night. Can you believe what happened after 2010? So the Bevo's boys uh, won the championship, ended the drought, then all of a sudden Trev came along and it was just like every year you expected to win a championship. Yeah, I think it changed, uh, you know, 2009-10 um, when we did sign, uh, you know, <laughs> I actually remember Bevo giving me a call and going through the list and uh, he says, yeah, we're going to sign Damian Martin and I'm thinking, is that the Damian Martin from the Sydney Spirit? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, isn't that the guy? He, he hardly played. I think he averaged like three points a game or something. Um, and he's like, yeah, but you, you, you wait and watch till he plays defense. And uh, I remember taking the first, first game. We got Brad Robbins. We got Damian Martin. We're in the full court press. I reckon we got three straight steals. And I was like, I get it, Bevo. I get it. This is going to be fun. Uh, and, uh, you know, away we went. So very quickly, take us through some of your favourite players you played with and against as well. There's one bloke over there that uh, he was born in WA. He never came back to WA. He seemed to travel around the world. He played for every club except the Perth Wildcats. He was your arch nemesis, wasn't he, Mark Worthington? We had some good battles. I think, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure we both flew through a few elbows there. Friendly elbows, I'm sure. Um, you, you know, uh, actually, I saw Simon Devlin over there. He said he saw Mark Worthington. Uh, you know, he, he was saying, you know, they're going to retire Sean's jersey. And, and Mark, Mark told him, I'll be the only guy booing. <laughs> but hey, I think we made each other better. I, I told someone on the radio today, you know, going up against Mark, going against Mick of Acona, you know, I had nightmares, but I also loved that battle. All right, last question. Uh, we've spoken about Damo. We've got Greg Hire over there, a little bit of the heart and soul of the team. Got a bloke called Bryce Cotton, not a bad player. You know, needs to probably improve his stroke a little bit more. Um, you played with some great players. Have you got a favorite that you played with or have you got a best that you played with? It's a, it's a hard one. Look, if, if I'm a GM of a team, um, look, uh, I'm not trying to take, take anyone's job, but I'm saying I'm going to sign Bryce Cotton as my first player, um, you know. <laughs> and, then, and then my second signing is going to be the guy that averaged three points at the Sydney Spirit, and that's Damian Martin. All right, uh, I'll let you take it away. Um, yeah, when you said, uh, if I was the GM of the team, poor old Sam Photo, I just nearly fell over thinking, hey, I've only been here a couple of years. Anyway, um, take it away. There were some tears in your eyes. I know you've got a lot of people to thank. This is a really emotional moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Redditch. Yeah, go ahead and take a seat. You might, might need it. Um... Look, it's, uh, it, I feel extremely lucky. Um, you know, there's a lot of cards that had to be played um, to me to eventually get out west. Um, you know, I was this boy who grew up in Lincoln, Nebraska. My first job was in the cornfields. And, uh, you know, I had a vision I wanted to play basketball professionally. Uh, I finished college, didn't have an outstanding career. But, you know, I, I had a dream. And, uh, but that dream wasn't uh, fulfilling um, because I, I didn't get any offers. So uh, I decided, Gretchen and I had just gotten married. So I decided, well, I'll finish my degree. We'll move on. And then I got one phone call uh, to go play in Tasmania. Uh, Mark Radford, uh, great coach, great friend, and uh, gave me that first opportunity. And uh, so I told Gretchen, we're moving to Tasmania. Um, she said, Is that, does that place exist? I thought that's a Disney character. 
Sure enough, it does. I looked on the map, so we got on the plane, we moved over here. It was just going to be for one year. And uh, then I'd probably go back. Uh, got the offer in New Zealand, went over there, played, didn't work out, went to Bendigo, and I get the call to come out west. And, uh, you know, I alluded to it before, but when I got here, I was like, this place is unbelievable. And then, and then I got at the time to Challenge Stadium and uh, I put on the jersey and I played in front of the Red Army. Um, Lucky Reed behind the mic. And I thought, couldn't get any better. Um, and then it just kept getting better and better and better. Look, it's, it's been a, a long journey, um, and I've got a lot of people to think, thank. Um, first off, my parents, you know, they're, they're not here tonight, but they're, they're back in America, and, uh, you know, all the sacrifices they've made, and now that I'm a, I'm a father, uh, you, you start to understand, you know, they've given up their weekends, they've given up everything to, to let you follow your dream. So, Mom and Dad, thank you for all the sacrifices you made. I had two unbelievable older brothers who never let me win at anything. Um, you know, outside of maybe winning the championships and, and now the moment now, I think my proudest moment was when I finally beat my older brother in basketball. Uh, he was, I think I was 14 at the time or something. He hasn't played me since. So, um, you know, Chris and Jeff, thank you for you, you know, showing me the way and, and being a great big brother that uh, I needed to to become the best that I could be. Um, to Gretchen, uh, you know. You got to understand, Gretchen had never eaten. She lived in the same house her entire life. So when I'd say, we're moving to Tasmania, <laughs> that is a big change. Uh, we were always going to go back to the United States. That was always the plan. But uh, we fell in love with Perth. We fell in love with WA. Uh, we fell in love with, with everything that this state uh, has to offer. And I think we're incredibly lucky. So thank you for all your support, your love. It's, uh, I'm not here without it. <laughs> to Dylan and Haley, you know, it, it changes you when you, when you become a dad. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm so proud of the, the people that you are becoming. I'm excited to, you know, for you to follow your passion. You know, I had parents that allowed me to follow my passion, so I'm gonna support you guys, love you guys. Uh, thank you for all the support, and uh, you know, uh, it's just, uh, it's awesome to have you guys here tonight. To all my family and friends in the crowd tonight, uh, around the world, that have supported me, you know, this just doesn't happen. Uh, you've got to have a huge community to, uh, to, to, to build you to the person that could possibly, you know, achieve something like this. So thank you. I've got some amazing family and friends here that have supported me throughout my journey, the ups and downs. Uh, so thank you. Thank you all. Um, to all the past players that are here, you know, uh, I think one of the things that makes this club so fantastic is, you know, everyone comes, comes back and, and still feels a part of it. And, uh, you know, yeah, I look over here, this, this group over here, and just feel immense proud. Um, the team over there, you know, when, when you put on that Wildcats jersey, you are family. So thank you guys for, for coming out and supporting tonight and supporting the team. Uh, to, my, uh, to the owners of the club, you know, when I came over here, Andrew Vlahoff, you know, you, you were responsible for bringing me over here. So uh, thank you for, you know, it, it's not easy. There, there was times I know where it was stressful to keep this club afloat. Um, and to Jack Bendat, 
and now Craig Hutchinson and the NSCN group. Thank you guys for putting all the time and effort to keep this wonderful club afloat throughout the years. To my coaches, you know, I was extremely blessed. Starting in high school, I had a coach who, you know, usually when you're the big guy, they just throw you down in the paint. He said, I want you to be a guard. Um, you get a rebound, just go. I reckon first game, I would have turned the ball over five or six times. He said, I don't care. You just keep going. And, uh, you know, I lived with that <laughs> the rest of my life. I, just, I got that ball, I went. <laughs> I'm sure, Bebo, you maybe hated it sometimes. But, um, you know, to, to my coaches, um, even back to high school, college, and then uh, when I got to professionally, uh, you know, Mark Radford, and then when I got over here, Scott Fisher, and then Bebo, you know, you changed change the, the club, and, and then Trevor Gleason to, uh, you know, to build it even even more, and and I think you know I, I thank Trevor for you know being able to giving me the ending that uh, every player hopes and, and desires, um, and probably another guy that probably helped that was Bryce Cotton, but um, <laughs> it was you know to still be a part of the team, finish off winning your last game is just an, an incredible feeling. So thank you to all the coaches that put all that time and effort to make me a better player and a better person. Um, and to the Wildcats staff, you know, this club, th you don't get 14,000 fans and the production that goes on in every game, um, you know, whether it be the ticketing, the marketing, um, you know, uh, Katie Reed getting us to make sure we get all to our player appearances on time, um, all the back staff that, that just do all the things that make this club great, you know, when I got here, we were playing over there in Challenge Stadium. Um, and then now to see this in this moment, it, it is just often, it doesn't happen unless you got a lot of people, hard work. And, uh, you know, to Sam Fo too, thank you for the opportunity and, and honoring me and, and making it happen tonight. So. Um, and last but not least, to the Red Army. <laughs> Man, I love putting on that Wildcats jersey. And I think a lot of it was, I knew how much this club meant to you guys. Um, you know, I used to come home from the game and, and my wife would say, man, did you hear the good music they were playing? And I was like, I only heard three things. I heard my coaches telling me to play defense. My coaches telling me, or my players, my teammates telling me to pass the ball. And the Red Army cheering every time I scored. So. You guys are, are what makes this club great. And man, if we have this crowd every single night, Bryce Cotton told me that we're gonna win the championship this year. Look, I know it's been long. Thank you for staying. It's, uh, it's a truly, it's a humbling experience. It's an honor. So I thank each and every one of you. I wish I could come give all of you guys a high five. Um, but just know that, uh, you know, Wildcat is in my heart forever. Ladies and gentlemen, please be on your feet. You give me one heck of a three cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, the number 42 is now officially retired at the Perth Wildcats. Three cheers for your Sean Reddick's The Scoring Machine. Hip, hip!